If you've watched me before, you may have figured out that I'm a big fan of the iPhone 13 mini as my daily phone. But this video is about how my 13 mini failed me on my recent intensive travel trip to Japan. I'll tell you about how it failed me and what I decided to do instead and how I planned for just such a problem happening. So let's get into it. When I left for Japan for an epic trip, in the second week of August this year. It was off the back of record-breaking temperatures in July there. It was clear I was going to be heading into a heat zone that was not only gonna be challenging, not only for me, but also for the gear I was gonna be using. Not only that, but the high humidity meant that regular daily temperatures of around 35 degrees centigrade or 95 Fahrenheit actually felt like 39 or 40 degrees centigrade or well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit day after day after day. And I wasn't going to be sheltering in air conditioned spaces all that much apart from when on bullet trains or in coffee shops or convenience stores stocking up on fluids to stop me from dehydrating into a shriveled raisin of a human being. No, I was going to be out there taking photos, capturing video in hot, hot temperatures. So how did my 13 mini handle it? Well, it kind of didn't. And here's the ways in which it failed. First, there's battery life. Now the battery on the 13 mini has always been a marginal thing. For my daily usage in New Zealand, it mostly gets through a day without needing an additional charge but I mostly work at home, so it doesn't really get much pull on that battery. But out traveling and trying to capture photos and video and using it only with my Insta360 Flow gimbal, it barely lasted the morning. I kid you not, not even the whole morning. Granted, I was up at 6 a.m. every day, sometimes earlier to get myself set to catch a train or get somewhere before the temperature got too high or before it got too crowded but it meant that I maybe got five hours max out of the 13 mini. And for a travel device, trying to coordinate my itinerary using the internet, trying to maybe make the odd video call using the eSIM that I had on my phone, as well as capturing video, well, that just becomes impossible. That brings me to my second problem. With such intense use, I was getting phone overheating warnings on my phone for the first time ever. Yes, it turns out that intense activity on my iPhone 13 mini in an environment where the ambient temperature is already really high and often in direct sunlight meant that the phone was just overheating a lot. And when it's overheating, that's it. You can't use it again until it's cooled down. And it really was very hot to touch. And it didn't just affect my 13 mini. It also affected the device I used to try to solve my problem, but I'll tell you about that later on. And it wasn't just intense use that was causing my 13 mini to overheat. Using the Apple MagSafe battery was a challenge. It doesn't charge the fastest at the best of times, but it became even slower for some reason when I tried to charge my iPhone using it at these times. I'm pretty sure that the intelligent management was slowing down the battery charge to try to prevent overheating and also damaging the battery. And yes, at a certain point, a message flashed up on the iPhone saying, charging via the Apple MagSafe battery was being halted until the iPhone cooled down. Now, one way to bypass this is to use a different MagSafe charging battery that doesn't pay attention to the temperature of the device. The snap grip charger that I have did just that, but I didn't want to use it in that way because overheating your device is not only dangerous in terms of causing a possible fire hazard, a nasty lithium fueled one too, which has really dangerous consequences, but it may also damage the battery in your device. I tried using an external wired battery and charging through the lightning connection and that worked a little better and even charging via a main supply when it was available, but there's no getting away from the fundamental problem. The 13 mini just cannot cope with intensive activity and use that you need it for when traveling for very long at all without needing a top up charge. And getting it charged up in a hot environment is really challenging without it overheating and then becoming unavailable for any use whatsoever. So that's one issue, which then has a cascading set of other issues that come from it. But there's another issue, because when you're traveling, you sometimes want a closer shot. And one of the things I miss on the iPhone 13 mini before this trip, I really, really miss lots of times, 
and that was the lack of a telephoto camera. My experience was that almost every time I was using my iPhone 13 mini for photos and most often video, I wanted the option of telephoto. Even just two times telephoto would be good, especially when using it with the Insta360 Flow gimbal, which has some nice integration with the zoom abilities of iPhones. So with all this in mind, I ended up taking my iPhone 11 Pro Max and use that exclusively with my Insta360 Flow for photo and video on this trip. I also added my 58mm Moment telephoto lens, which worked well with the Moment case that I have on my 11 Pro Max and works nicely on top of the 2x telephoto lens, getting me even closer to action and details. Let me go through the reasons why I foresaw what might happen and decided that taking my 11 Pro Max exclusively for photo and video was the best solution for the problems I faced. First, the battery is so much bigger that it could last all day, even with intensive use for video at 4K, 60 frames per second. Even then, I did have to give it a top up charge after some extremely long days, like up at 6 a.m. and not getting back to my accommodation until say 10 p.m. Second, it overheated once, only once. So it wasn't immune from that problem, but it did do it a lot less. I'm guessing it's the larger surface area from which it can radiate and lose heat because believe me, it was still getting pretty hot to touch in those hot ambient temperatures and intensive use. Third, I didn't have to worry about storage capacity. My iPhone 13 mini is a 128 gig device and I lean heavily on iCloud to offload documents, images, and videos. That also places a pretty heavy burden on battery and power management too. With my 11 Pro Max having 512 gigs of storage, I just put it in airplane mode and switched Bluetooth on so it could be controlled by the gimbal and didn't have to worry about storage at all after that. But you can be sure that I synced to the cloud via Wi-Fi as soon as I could. I didn't want to lose any of that footage. And of course, there's that precious telephoto capability in my 11 Pro Max that the 13 mini just doesn't have. So for intensive travel, where you're gonna be using your iPhone in lots of different ways, from managing your travel, looking up stuff on the internet, communicating with people, and posting on social media, as well as capturing photos and video, the iPhone 13 mini really fell short for me. My solution was to go big and old school with my 11 Pro Max, which actually performed really well. Now, in my case, I had two devices at hand, but in truth, the 13 mini really struggled to cope as far as power management was concerned, even without taking too many photos and videos and just restricting it to comms and internet use. If I had to take just one device, I would come down in favor of the 11 Pro Max, even though it's a few years old now. Because of that bigger battery, heat and power management, storage, and that telephoto lens. Surprise? I was a little, but also not so much because I took it along for just such eventualities. But let me know in the comments what you think. I will be in the market for a bigger phone again but most likely only if it has a max telephoto camera option, for example, like the rumored Periscope telephoto lens on the upcoming 15 Pro Max. I think you might like this video next, and YouTube also thinks you might like this. Watch out for my Japan guide videos coming soon if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and travel well.